So Pantheon gives us three environments to control our workflow on our site. In this lesson, we're going to actually begin using those environments. Now you get a dev environment when you start your site on Pantheon. We're going to go ahead and create the test and live environments that we'll need. And then we will go through the process of making updates to the live site using dev, merging those changes into test, and then deploying that code out to live. And then we'll look at how you can pull your live database content down to dev to make sure that your dev environment is sort of staying up to date with the latest of what's happening out on your live environment. So let's take a look at this. So I'm in the uh, dashboard here for uh, a website that I'm, I have just uh, gotten started. I have the dev environment, of course, which was started for me, but I don't yet have my other environments. So let's go create test and live and get the whole site sort of up and going. We already have an existing site um, so it's working like there's stuff on it and content and things like that has all happened in dev. Then when it comes to test, I need to create the environment. Notice it's going to clone the entire development environment. This is not just the code. This is the entire environment, including the database and files. So all of the work that I've done on dev will be created in the test environment the first time when you very first create the environment. So let's go ahead and click that. And then that'll take a, a few minutes, which we're going to accelerate a little um, to get that environment copied over for you. So once we have the test environment created, you'll see we get the same thing. We have our commit log, it just brought everything over. And now we have a new deploys tab. And you can see that we have the test environment created here. We're gonna need to do the same thing with live. We wanna get this site all the way up to live and publish. So after you've tested it, uh, we'll go over to live. Um, you can't create a live environment until a test environment exists. It just won't work. So you have to do it in this order. So let's go ahead and we're gonna do the same thing here. And again, it'll take a few minutes. So now all of my work that I've done in dev is finally gone through the pipeline and is, is live. So now I have all three of the environments in place. That fully functioning website with all of its database and configuration, everything has, is identical in all three environments right now because we've just been cloning. Now, now that we have something live, we want to do ongoing development. And so now we're going to enter into your standard workflow with uh, the Pantheon environments here. And so what I'm going to do is go back to the dev environment and I'm going to hack on some code in here and make some changes. So I'm going to move over to my command line. I'm going to be using Git. You can use SFTP or Git, you know, all the development you've been doing. It's the same process of, of modifying the code. So I'm just going to go modify some code and come back and then we'll see how to move that code up through the environments. So I'm logged in I'm on the master branch here uh, for the dev environment. And so I'm just going to do a very simple a code change here where I'm going to add um, some modules that we need on the site. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead, commit that stuff, and then push them back up to the master branch. So I've made changes to my master branch on dev. Now let's go back to the Pantheon uh, UI. And you can see in the commit log um, that my, my commit is here, and it says that it is ready to pull into test. So if we go, we can either click this or I can go to the test environment here. And the, under the deploys tab now, um, in, in addition to the, the previous entry we had, we have it showing us that we have a commit that is ready. If there were multiple commits, they would all be listed here. So let's just look at uh, these options real quickly here. So running update.php, these are just sort of best practices, right? Clearing cache. So you, you probably want to do those things, but if you don't, you can uncheck them. Now, this is not checked by default, but this is probably a good idea. Again, it depends on your workflow and what changes you're actually putting out. But we want to pull the files and database from the live environment. So remember, I just made a code change on dev. And when I do this deployment on a test, all I'm doing is pulling the code. I am not pulling in any of the database stuff. And 
the reason it's asking for database from live environment is, of course, if, if this, is a, this code is going to eventually live on the live environment, we'd like to make sure that the code that I just worked on also works with any updates that have been happening on the live site. So we want the latest and greatest version of the live site when we do our testing. So I'm going to go ahead and check this because I would like to merge this. Now, one other thing I want to point out as we do this, if there were configuration changes that needed to happen, again, we're not pulling the database, so I would need to account for configuration changes another way. So I've added these modules, but if I actually configured them on my dev site, that wouldn't get pushed up. And so in Drupal, the typical way of handling moving those things is to put configuration changes into code using a tool like Features, or you can write update hooks. There's a, a whole API for, for doing updates and you can manually write the code to make those changes. Or of course, you could also just have a checklist of, okay, once you deploy this, click these buttons and do that thing. Best practices is to try and get as much of that configuration into code. So when I do this code deployment in a test, it's just there and nobody has to do something. But that's something you just need to be aware of. This is a code update to test. That's all we're doing here. So nothing else I did on the development side is going to come forward. And so once I have everything sort of ready, I put a little log message in here for this deployment. And then uh, it tells me in the button, as you change things up here, it it'll change the text in the button. So I'm going to copy content from live and I'm going to deploy code from development. I'm going to bring both of those objects together into the test environment. So once you click this, again, this will take a few minutes, and then we'll have all of our stuff fresh and ready to QA on test. So that's it. I've now deployed it. It has our little uh, log message that we put here. And now the test site has combined kind of all the latest and greatest from all of the environments so that we can now go do QA, get feedback and things like that. Another uh, good thing to sort of think about or be aware of when you are, especially with, with test, before we go to deploy this to live, which will be our next step here, is uh, you can, it, there's this status tab and you can run a check and this is sort of a list of best practices checks on the site that Pantheon will run for you to let you know if there are any red flags or things that you should be really aware of on this. And so you can see we have just a, a, a bunch of, of basic checks. Um, you can see these red things are because I don't have caching enabled. So a lot of this is about making sure you get the best performance out of your site. Not necessarily um, things that are like, oh my gosh, the site is broken, but things that we probably want to look at and investigate when before we go live or that we should make sure that these are on our live site because this database and a lot of this stuff is coming from the live site. So, but just so you know, you can check that status, which is kind of nice when you're in that test phase. Now, let's go ahead and just deploy this to live, assuming that everything's looking the way that we expect it to. So I'm going to go to my live environment. And again, we go to deploys. So you can see we have one commit that is ready to deploy from test. So we want to grab that stuff that was in test and bring it forward up to live. Our options are similar to before, except of course there's nothing about a database because, well, we don't want to mess with the live database. It stays. It's the canonical source. So we're just going to leave that. And again, we can add a uh, log message. And then we'll go ahead and just deploy this out onto our live site. And boom, just like that, the code changes that I made on dev have moved all the way up, been QA'd, and are now on our live site. Now, one last thing to look at in terms of, of using this workflow. As I said uh, just a minute ago, the live database is the canonical database. That's the important one. You don't want to mess with that. So you never move dev or test up into the live database. Only code moves that direction. But quite often you will want to take the live database and move it back to test or to dev to make sure that those environments are up to date so that you can test your code against essentially the real site, right? So let's, if we go back to uh, my dev environment here, and let's say I want to update that, this workflow tab is going to give me that opportunity and lets me clone database and files. So I can say I want to take something from either the test environment or the live environment, and I'm going to take it from live. Uh, what I want to take, do I want to run these uh, standard things here? 
we can go ahead and do that. There's not going to be any harm to that. Um, update.php, maybe you wouldn't if you already had some code in there. And then this, again, this button tells you what you're going to do. So I'm going to clone database and files from live into my development environment. And that's it. So now I have a fresh database and files in my dev environment. So when I'm writing code, I know that things are working or they are exactly how they're going to be when I get out to the live site. So that is the basics of the Pantheon workflow. To recap that workflow, we created our test and live environments initially from our uh, all the initial dev work we did to launch the site, to get that kind of out there. And uh, in that process, we were cloning the entire environment. So code, database, and files um, got replicated to all three of the environments so they were all in the same starting place with fully functioning websites. After that, we went back and committed some code to my dev environment, and then we went ahead and looked at test, and we merged code from dev with database from live into test. So we basically had all of the latest up-to-date versions of all the things in one site so we could test that and make sure that it's all working properly. Once we verified that and we looked at sort of the status reports that we could run, uh, then I went ahead and deployed the code out to live. And our happy little site was clipping along. And then to wrap things up, I also looked at how you can take your live database and files back down to your development environment to make sure that that's staying up to date as the changes are happening out there. So that is uh, the basic Pantheon workflow and how you can work it.